All right, let's test this one more time. One, two, three, let it be. What, is that? what do you guys think? Is that good? If any of you can catch this reference or what it's from, you will get a solid virtual high five because that's all I can afford to give you. Testing, testing. One, two, three. You guys like my makeshift uh, microphone here? Hi, everyone. Um, took me a while to get set up, but I think I'm ready now. And I hope that the message that I can speak to you today comes across in the way the Holy Spirit intends. That's my prayer today. So the reason I'm out here is because after I did a little um, video and I did my picnic with you guys in place of Mondays with Mel, when she wasn't able to do that episode that week, you guys really responded well and I was so humbled and it was just, it was, it was really nice and we got a lot of people asking for more and I really didn't intend to do more episodes like this at all. Since we're doing our summer break and we're in between season, we just finished season three and we're going into season four. Um, during this little break, Melissa asked if I could do just um, a few more of these little clips with you guys and take you out into nature with me. So I prayed a lot about what I wanted to talk about. I think that the only thing that I have any kind of permission, if you will, to talk about is what the Lord is currently speaking to me and revealing to me. And so know that as I talk to you guys about this topic today, it's something that the Lord is also working on through me and has helped me mature in, in great lengths in this, this season. And so the topic is forgiveness. And I know that Melissa wanted to do a podcast episode on it. And so I'm sure we will follow up in greater depth. I just wanted to kind of talk about what the Lord has shown me in terms of forgiveness, because I, I feel like the church talks a lot about forgiveness and the importance of forgiveness. We see it written out all throughout scripture, Old and New Testament, about how God forgives those who repent, right? And how more than that, we also see how God asks us to forgive others, right? In fact, he says, if you can't forgive a fellow Christian, how can you expect me to forgive you? That's kind of hypocritical. And we see that all throughout scripture. Hi! <laughs> A horse scared me. I just saw a big beast. <laughs> that was cool. I wonder what people think when they see me recording in public. So the Bible talks a lot about forgiveness. We know this. We know that the, the scriptures talk about forgiveness and we talk a lot about it in the church as a result as well. We should. I, I've always heard it. Talk, I've always accepted that in my life. I've forgiven a lot of people who've hurt me. But the Lord really brought me back to this teaching once again in light of my divorce. And I know that most of you know that I've gone through divorce. And I know it's it's difficult for people to really understand divorce in the Christian uh, church. Well, I've been really surprised by the response of my divorce, to be completely honest. I think because I grew up, uh, well, rather, my parents came out of a really legalistic church where everything was a sin. They couldn't even dance their own wedding because dancing could be seen as a sin uh, which is nowhere in scripture but everything was a sin from where my parents came from and I you know growing up in the church like divorce was was not okay at all you never met anybody who was divorced and if you did meet somebody that was divorced they were very like everyone kind of just put their hands up and were just like yeah we love you but and so that was kind of what I expected to be honest when I got my divorce but I haven't and it's good but at the same time it's it's kind of concerning to me because on the opposite end I've gotten a lot of conversations about how how welcomed it is and how supported divorce is in the church and now we're on the extreme opposite and that I'm not okay with some some people have been talking about how uh in their church they're like everyone's divorced and everyone's getting divorced and that made my stomach turn a little bit because that's not, that's not what I came out of. And so we definitely had to find balance and understanding of the word and how that applies. Because uh, if you guys saw my interview, we know that divorce isn't a sin. It's the consequence of sin. And I break that down into greater detail in my interview. If you want to go back, I think it's the second season. I'll, I'll, I'll put the link in the caption because I go into greater detail about it. And I don't want to go into too, too much detail about it because that's not the topic I want to focus on. And I'll just go on a huge bunny trail. 
or further on the bunny trail because I'm already down it. But I like to talk about my divorce because I made a decision a long time ago because I know the Lord has called me to take the mic to take up the microphone. And the Lord has called me to present a word, to present his word, to pre- present his gospel um, up on stage. And so because of that, I've been very vigilant to watch speakers and learn from them. Um, and not just what to do, but also learn what not to do. And at the end of the day, I don't want to ever be labeled a hypocrite. So I let it be known right off the bat that, yes, I am a divorced woman. I did get divorced for biblical reasons. You know, there was infidelity within my marriage. So I I did everything that I possibly could to save my marriage. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. And it was by the release of the Lord himself who came to me in prayer and through my leaders in the church who um, condoned the, the necessity for that that parting. I didn't just leave because I wasn't happy. So I think that's really important to explain because at the end of the day, I also think that you have the right as the listener who's taking a spiritual consideration into what I might be saying and weighing who it's coming from. You know, I'm somebody that, you know, if you want to know who I am, ask me, I'll tell you, but I want you to feel comfortable as the listener and who's prayerfully considering everything that I'm saying to know who it's coming from. And I believe we have that right with any of our leaders, with anyone who, who's a pastor, who's a, who wants to be an influencer. If you're going to take up the microphone and you're going to stand on stage or on a camera, title or no title, and say and speak the word of God to other people, you better be living it. And you better make sure that people know who you are and what you've come out of and what authority you think you have to be making the sort of teachings and statements that you're making. And I think that's fair to the listeners who are spiritually considering everything you have to say. And if people don't want to listen to what you have to say because you have a bad past, well, then that's something they have to deal with the Lord. Because then at that point, they're not willing to accept that we have a God of forgiveness, that if we repent, um, truly repent, and we step into that repentance, the Lord will forgive us. But again, that has to be between the listener and God. But if you're not willing to put it all out there, and you're not willing to let the people weigh that out for themselves, then you're holding on to secrets and you're holding on to sins that will ultimately catch up with you later. That was another huge bunny trail. Absolutely nothing like I wanted to talk about. Anyway, what, how did I get? Oh, forgiveness. I want to talk about forgiveness because I myself have had, have had to forgive. And in my most recent um, experience of divorce, that has played a major theme in my recovery and in um, overcoming this uh, hurt and this pain that I went through. And so I wanted to talk about it because I feel like the church talks a lot about it, as in you have to forgive, and there's a lot of instruction to forgive, but there's not really a how. And I think, I think I've finally come to a place where I understand the how in a much better light than I ever have before. You know, walking out the the betrayal of my marriage I knew that I had to forgive and so I right away I've just that's my mindset towards anything I don't want to carry somebody else's bitterness and pain and place it upon myself that's why I want to talk about forgiveness today is because this one was a tough one and I'm sure we all have had those tough ones I kept declaring it Lord I forgive him Lord I forgive him Lord, I forget every day, every time I got angry, Lord, I forgive him. And it helped, but I still felt angry and I still felt bitter. And I was still dealing with the memories and the hurts and the, the angers that came along with that. And I kept asking God, what, I, I keep saying I forgive him, but I'm still angry. So, you know, the Lord really had me walk out these steps of forgiveness. And every time I prayed about it, every time that I pressed into it and God, you know, can, can you restore my marriage? Is, do you want that? Is that, is that possible? And I know it sounds crazy. Why would I want my marriage restored? But in that place and in that time, I was just really crying out, Lord, restore my marriage. But every single time the Lord said, let go. And I would pray again, let go. And then another time I'd be praying again. And the Lord would just come every time, let go, let go. And that was the only words that he would use for the longest time is just let go. And you know, the Lord led me to do a word study on the word forgiveness. And wouldn't you know, and I wish, it's on my phone, which I'm recording with. And I wrote it down. And I wrote down the word and I didn't memorize it because there's three different words for forgiveness that I wrote down. One Hebrew, two Greek words. And 
I even wrote down the scripture that it's found in, and I'm just so frustrated with myself. <laughs> so I will put it in the caption what those words were and what they mean. But there is there's one word on there, there's one word for forgiveness that pulls up, and lo and behold, it meant to let go. And the Lord really walked me through that, through scripture, of showing me what forgiveness really meant. And, you know, I think that in the body of Christ, we think and we're taught that forgiveness means that we're cool with them. Forgiveness means that we're no longer angry, we're no longer bitter, that we trust and that we welcome them into relationship once again. But that's not forgiveness. In fact, forgiveness is to let go, to pardon of sin. And when the Lord showed me that, he showed me that to forgive is to no longer hold accountable the anger that you feel towards this person. And so forgiveness doesn't mean that you enter into relationship with them again. It doesn't mean that you have to trust them again. And it doesn't even mean that your anger is taken away. But what it means is that you're no longer going to hold that person accountable for your anger. And so when I said, okay, I forgive, it meant that I no longer held him accountable for my anger. I no longer expected him to fix my anger, to make me feel better. But it didn't mean that the anger just went away. It didn't mean that me forgiving him and me no longer holding him accountable for my anger meant that the anger just went away. The anger was still there. But now I can bring that to God. And I have been. And I'm able to look up to God and go, God, I'm upset. I'm angry. I need your help. Instead of my husband needs to do X, Y, Z. He needs to fix this. He needs to step back in my life again and do X, Y, Z. I was able to just let him go and say, you know what, Lord, I pray for peace over and genuinely. When I say I've forgiven him and I pray nothing but the best for him, I, I mean that with my whole heart. But now I can look up to God and go, anytime that I feel angry or I remember something that brings me frustration or bitterness, I can go to God and I'm not in use to have to deal with the anger. Don't get me wrong. Definitely deal with the anger. Definitely deal with the hurt. But now you can deal with it with someone who's trustworthy. I think a lot of the times we expect that when we say those magic words, Lord, I forgive so-and-so, that we think that the anger and the bitterness goes along with that. You know, sometimes it does. I've heard of amazing testimonies where it does. But in most cases, I've seen people still deal with anger and bitterness, and they feel guilty, and so they just don't deal with it, and they kind of just shove it down, thinking, no, I've forgiven this person. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be angry anymore. But that's not what forgiveness is. It just means that you don't hold them accountable for that anger anymore. But it's still in you. You do still need to deal with it. You do still need to no longer allow that to control your life. But that's where you bring it to God. Because here's the thing. If you, even in a physical sense, if you ignore the responsibility of healing that brokenness, whether it's your fault or not, it's going to fester and it's going to get worse. So at the end of the day, I know it wasn't your fault. I know that hurt wasn't your fault. I know that emotional turmoil is not your fault. But it is your responsibility to heal. You know, if someone comes up and stabs you, you're not going to go up to that person and go, Hey, hey, you stabbed me? <laughs> Bugs. I'm just food. I'm a feast today. But you're not going to go up to that person that stabbed you and go, Hey, you hurt me and you need to fix this. No, you got to fix it. If it's light enough, you can put a bandage on it yourself and move on with your life. If it's heavy enough, you're going to need some help. But either way, it is your responsibility to make sure that it heals properly. And you can't ignore it because it's not your fault. Well, I'm not going to do anything about it until they do something about it. And unfortunately, that's what we do in a very real sense when it comes to the emotional. When you forgive somebody, it's letting them go. But unfortunately, and I'm so sorry, the responsibility of healing is still on you. And once you forgive them, it's your responsibility to heal that hurt. And But trust me, when you start making progress, you don't ignore it. And you start making progress towards it, it's so worth it. And you become stronger and a far better person as a result. Like a cut on your arm, if you ignore it, well, it wasn't my fault. I shouldn't have to deal with it. But if you ignore it, it's going to get worse. And by the time you're forced to deal with it, it's significantly worse. And it's much harder to get rid of and it's much harder to heal. But if you take action now, take action now, recognize the hurts, where they've been placed in your life, and you take action into healing those things, regardless of the fact that, it not, that it's not your fault, 
You'll begin to see real progress in your relationship with God, your growth, your stamina, and you're just a way better person for it. And trust me, it's worth it. So as the scripture says, to forgive is to let go. To pardon is to separate yourself from that person's sin and to no longer hold them accountable for it. So you might forgive somebody, meaning of the, the betrayal, right? If you've been betrayed and you forgive that person of the betrayal that they caused and the hurt that they caused you, it means that you're no longer holding them accountable for your hurt and for your pain and for that anger. It doesn't mean that the anger suddenly just goes away. It doesn't mean that the anger suddenly disappears and is dismissed from your life because you said those, those magic words, I forgive you. It means I'm no longer holding you accountable for my anger. And now you are free, and there's so much freedom in that, because now you are free to go to the one who is trustworthy and bring that to God and say, now I need your help. You're taking the anger away from this person. You're taking responsibility for it and saying, okay, God, and you're lifting it up to God. Do you still need to deal with that anger and that bitterness? Yes. Absolutely. But now you can do it with somebody who's trustworthy, a father who loves us and who's not going to betray us. And you can take that up to God. So when you forgive somebody and you feel guilty because you're still angry, but if you forgive somebody and you're still, still hurt and you're feeling guilty about that, don't feel guilty. To forgive simply means to let go, to no longer hold them accountable of the debts of your anger, to no longer hold them accountable for what they've put you through. Right? Let go and let God. You still need to deal with that anger, though. You still need to deal with that bitterness, but you have the freedom to now deal with it here instead of here. Because if you try to deal with anger and bitterness and offenses here, you're getting nowhere. So stop trying to deal with it here. Release that person. You know what? All the best to you. Truly. And look up to God and he will help you overcome it. And that's where you'll begin to see changes in your life, growth. You'll start seeing freedom and feeling just the absolute warmth and love of God upon your life. And you know what? In some cases, it is absolutely necessary to uh, give somebody a chance to show that they're trustworthy again and to enter into relationship with them again. But that's not the standard. And that's where you really have to hear God and, and allow him to direct you. If God wants you to be in a relationship with somebody who's hurt you, or give somebody a second chance, you really have to hear God on that. But that's not the standard of forgiveness. The standard of forgiveness really is to just let go, to pardon from sin, to dismiss. And unfortunately, in the body of Christ and in church, I feel like it's way too taught. It's taught as a standard that forgiveness means to enter back into relationship again. Forgiveness means to trust. Forgiveness means to give them a second chance. That's not forgiveness. Unfortunately, we have too many people in the body of Christ who use the story of the prodigal son to fit their narrative and make you feel guilty that you're not letting them back in your life. And if we read it within context, right? The prodigal son is in Luke chapter 15. Read it for yourself. The prodigal son, we know the story, went out, partied, went wild, but then he dealt with the consequences of his sin. After dealing with the consequences of his sin, he said, why am I here? Let me go back to my father's house and at least attempt to be a servant. The prodigal son then goes back to his father and the father meets him and is so excited and happy that his son has returned and welcomes him back and gives him a huge hug, throws him a huge party to celebrate his return, right? Please read that story. So unfortunately, a lot of narcissists will use that story to say, I'm sorry, now take me back. But you got to understand the prodigal son left his sin. First, the prodigal son endured the consequence of his sin, right? He endured the consequence of his sin. And upon repentance, he left the place that he was at. And he came back to the father with a servant heart, with a willingness to work. But if someone comes back into your life and says, sorry, and you don't give them what they want, or you don't give them the response they feel they deserve, and they use that kind of scripture to try to manipulate you, that's not true repentance. True repentance is, I'm sorry, and I will take whatever consequence is necessary. 
I will be willing to work as a servant. But true repentance is leaving the place that you're at and asking for forgiveness and willing to make things right and make things better. And so if somebody in your life is using that scripture to manipulate you and make you feel guilty for not giving them a second chance or welcoming them back in your life, you know they're not truly repentant and it's okay not to give them a second chance. You can forgive them because the scripture commands us to forgive. As Jesus said, anyone who asks for forgiveness, we are required to forgive. Up to 77 times 7. There's a lot of 7s in there. And it's not really an actual number, right? He was just trying to prove a point to Peter. But that's the standard that we uphold. Is letting them go. And again, if the Lord shows up in your life and you really feel a conviction to give this person another chance because of your prayer time and because of your relationship with the Lord and that you were instructed in that place and not because this person manipulated you or tried to make you feel bad or feel guilty, if you really feel like they need a second chance in your life, that needs to be from God. But the standard of forgiveness is not giving somebody a second chance. The standard of forgiveness is to let them go and no longer hold them accountable to your anger or to any debts or to any sins that they committed against you. So if you have somebody in your life who is misusing scripture or using it to manipulate you or make you feel guilty, it might be time to to let them go, to really forgive them. So if someone asks for forgiveness, absolutely give them forgiveness because the word of God says so and I promise there's so much freedom in that. But whatever debt of anger or sin or bitterness, or even financial debt that you might have been put in. Now you can deal with that with the Lord. It still needs to be dealt with. It still needs to be healed. But you no longer are placing that responsibility on the other person. And now you can deal with it with God, who is trustworthy, and who will actually help you navigate through this and heal properly, as opposed to continuously reaching out to the person who made you angry in the first place. There was, There's was. there been several times I remember... My brother especially, he used to hit, he was a hitter. My little brother, we were having an argument and out of frustration, he just hit me. And my mom comes in, she asks what happened and (laughs) I told her, Sam hit me. And she looked at my brother, why did you hit her? Well, because she said, I don't remember what I said, but she said I was stupid or something. She said I was stupid. And so my brother got in trouble, but not me. And he said, wait a minute, hold on. She called me stupid. Why is she not getting in trouble? And my mom said, well, you've already enacted the punishment. So now I don't have to. But now you're going to get in trouble for hitting her because that was not your responsibility. And that really, that stuck with me. My mom's done that several times growing up. And that stuck with me. If you're going to take matters into your own hands, why does God have to? Trust me, you want God to take matters into his own hands. He's much better at it than we are. And there's a guaranteed result if God gets involved as opposed to you trying to hold on to that and you trying to punish this person. If you're sitting here holding a grudge against somebody, if you're sitting there um, in unforgiveness and being petty or just expecting them to fulfill some kind of debt to you, if you're enacting any kind of punishment on this person, whether it just be holding on to a grudge or you're actually being petty and rude, Whatever it is, why would God step in when you feel like you have, you're doing, you're, you feel like you're doing a good enough job, why, you know, but God, why aren't you punishing them? Well, you, you're doing a good enough job for the both of us. But also, because it's not your responsibility and you're acting outside of my will and you're trying to take matters into your own hands, you have to get, you are going to bear the consequence of that for your actions. The end of the day, we can't change what other people are doing. The end of the, and that we did a whole conversation on that and a whole episode uh, titled "Boundaries" in our last season. So please check that out. But you can't control what other people are doing. You can only take responsibility for yourself, and you're going to experience the consequence for yourself. Remember Adam and Eve. God went to Adam and said, "Why did you eat the fruit?" He points the the finger to Eve. And says, the woman you gave me. Not only did he blame Eve, he also blamed God. The woman you gave me, gave me the fruit. And then he goes to Eve, and she says, well, it was a serpent. Right? Did any one of them who blamed another person get dismissed from receiving a consequence? No. They all received a consequence in accordance with their level of sin. Right? So, you blaming somebody else, you pointing the finger, 
doesn't take away the consequence. You're going to receive the consequence for your actions, regardless of whose fault it was originally. And so in this case of forgiveness, if we don't forgive, we're against the word of God. And if we're against the word of God, we're, there's gonna, we're going to bear a consequence as a result. And we can sit there and point the finger all the way. But you don't know what he did. You don't know what they said. You don't know where I'm at with this person. If you aren't acting out in the will and in the way of God, there will be a consequence, regardless of what this person did. So take responsibility for yourself. Trust me. The Lord doesn't command you to forgive to punish you. The Lord commands you to forgive to give you freedom. So I really hope this is encouraging to anyone who's listening. I really hope this is helping anyone who might be holding any kind of grudge. Um, and for anyone who's, who's wondering if they should get back together, their ex or not, I would first suggest that you forgive them. And what does that mean? I wondered for a really long time, Lord, do you want me to get back together with my ex-husband? Do Is it within your will to restore this marriage? And I would pray into that constantly. But the Lord reminded me that that prayer and that expectation and that hope was actually as a result of not forgiving him. Because when I got down to the root of it, I hoped that it was in the restoration of my marriage that, I, that all of our problems could be fixed, that all of the hurt and the trauma and the anger that I felt would be fixed. In other words, I was putting the responsibility of my healing on the restoration of my marriage and not on God. And it showed me that I haven't truly forgiven my husband. I haven't truly let him go. And when I stopped holding him accountable to my healing and to my anger, and I started looking upwards to God instead, I now have complete and total peace because my healing comes from God, not from my ex-husband. And so for those of you who are struggling with, do I get back together with this person or not? And there's still that emotional attachment it's time to forgive them and it's time to let go and it's in that place of letting go and not holding them accountable to your healing not holding the hope of the redemption of your relationship to your healing and to your value and your worth but looking upwards to god and knowing that that only comes from god there is where you'll find freedom my message was all over the place today i'll have a whole lot of fun editing this because like i said my notes were on my phone but um, hopefully that all made sense. And again, I hope that this really touches you. And I hope that this really, um, for those who are listening, if you're struggling with unforgiveness, if you're struggling with letting go of a relationship, it all ties into forgiveness. And I hope that showing you and teaching you a little bit of what forgiveness really means in the Bible can help you truly, truly let go and begin to heal. Have a blessed day, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.